Hi, my name is Alyssa Weiss and I will be taking this video to discuss a clinical problem that I've identified in my nursing setting. Given that I haven't had really any clinical experience throughout this program, I've decided to talk about a significant problem that I think is happening in my current workplace. Um, I work in the Scottsdale Shea Medical Center emergency room and a clinical problem that we have experienced at least in the last three years that I have been there has been emergency department overcrowding and that's effect on admission rates or the admission rates effect on emergency room overcrowding. I have come to notice as an emergency medicine nursing staff or core staff that you are also telemetry, med surge, ICU, pediatrics because many patients are unable to obtain hospital beds upstairs due to lack of nursing staff, lack of hospital beds, um, insurance issues, all sorts of stuff like that that will hinder the process moving more smoothly. Um, I believe that that would be like a hospital issue to deal with the overall clinical problem as it needs to be addressed whether there should be more beds in the hospital, more beds in the emergency department, more nursing staff upstairs, more nursing staff in the emergency department, um, anything along those lines in order to truly establish why the emergency department becomes so overcrowded and then that leads to hospital overcrowding and admission rates and times being extremely skyrocketed. There are many hospitals in the valley that have um, several wait, several hours worth of wait times. Um, I know currently in the Scottsdale emergency room we have been having at least two to four hours worth of a wait to be able to see an emergency medicine doctor and anywhere from a two to um, seven to eight hour wait to see your hospitalist and your nursing staff upstairs if you are determined to be needing admission. There's so much research on this topic as I believe it is a long-standing topic that the hospital systems are attempting to work with but maybe there is a lack of funding or a lack of nursing staff or medical staff or issues that are being handled with insurance companies and stuff so um, that will be the main focus of this video first of all overcrowding in the emergency departments is a serious public health issue Overcrowding not only affects the quality of care received by each patient, but also clinical decisions made by physicians in regard to patient admission. Jung et al. 2021. The problem with overcrowding resides in a lot of factors, um, including increased number of patients, shortage of emergency department resources, and the number of admits that are waiting to go upstairs to their inpatient bed. Um, patients who are not being seen immediately in the emergency department risk um, their life at in some circumstances because healthcare staff is unable to determine what's going on internally that may be causing them to feel the way that they are feeling but also the overcrowding in the ED and the overcrowding upstairs leading to admission times being so backed up leads medic leads to medication and treatment delays as many emergency room staff will not start upstairs unit orders due to not having the time not having the resources not having just the overall ability um and also having other patients that need to be cared for on a more immediate basis The biggest problem with overcrowding in the ED is the prolonged presence of patients admitted to the hospital that are waiting for their bed to become available. And according to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, the two biggest reasons for ED overcrowding include uninsured patients or underinsured who are not being seen in a primary care provider's office and patients who are over the age of 65 with chronic medical conditions as they are typically the most commonly seen patients um, as they always need assistance medically. 
in determining how to operationalize the practice change in the practice environment, this could be based off of um, discussing the ED admissions and the hospital admissions and the overcrowding in general with the physicians on staff, with the nursing care um, providers on staff, with the individuals that run the hospital, the CEOs, the CNOs, um, the individuals who assist with um, licensing with the hospitals, such as the DNV, because each individual's input is important on this subject matter as each individual might see the reasonings behind different subjects to be different in general. Um, I know personally as a emergency department staff, I would say that ED overcrowding and the hospital admissions rates um, and admit times has to do with a lack of either beds upstairs or nursing staff upstairs because there are many um, beds that are available for patients to take over and to be placed in, but there's no nursing staff to take care of them. And on most units, they have about a four to five to one ratio, and they typically will not overdo that as that's that could jeopardize the nurse's license and jeopardize the patient's um, overall care. So it would be important to involve all individuals that are part of the staff to determine what the best plan of change would be to assist with the admit times and the overcrowding. In researching and implementing new standards to fix this problem, um, I would probably choose quantitative research as it is conducted to describe new situations, events, or concepts, examine relationships among variables, and determine the effectiveness of interventions on selected health outcomes. Gray et al. 2017. And I would most likely choose the correlational research process as correlational research would describe the correlation between one situation and its effect on the next situation as you could determine if more emergency room beds helped the issue if more hospital beds helped the issue um you know if adding more staff to the hospital beds upstairs assisted with ed admit times um as they are able to swiftly go up to their room and be taken care of faster so I would definitely go with a quantitative correlational practice. Um, there could be various barriers to implementation as there's always cost that's involved with any healthcare implementation process. Um, given that all of those individuals that I spoke about earlier, your nursing staff, physicians, um, DNV, CNOs, CEOs, and all that stuff would be involved in discussing how to fix this problem. Um, it would be important to discuss the barriers of cost, especially if the problem is related to insurance purposes and um, their payout, as I know that Medicare will usually assist a patient in paying for a um, hospital admission if it's more than two days. So those are the types of situations that need to be looked at and um, addressed further because those could be a part of the barriers. Um, other barriers could simply just be um, hospital staff maybe not wanting to come in due to generic burnout. Um, some individuals as of the last year have not wanted to partake in healthcare due to COVID being on the rise and wanting to stay away from it for family, personal, religious, medical, all sorts of reasons. Um, so getting hospital staff to actually come in and work some extra shifts or um, provide that extra care for these patients could be a barrier, but with that could also potentially come um, incentives, bonuses, 
um, obviously overtime pay and stuff like that that could maybe assist with that barrier to implementation. Sources of internal evidence used to provide data to demonstrate improvement in outcomes um, is, I feel like, relatively easy for this type of topic. Given that it is a quantitative research project, um, there's a lot of numbers involved. So there would be numbers involved in the change in ED wait times, the change in overall ED admit times, um, the overall time that a patient may spend in the hospital, the cost of all of this implementation, um, nursing staff numbers involved in what numbers may assist with helping the admission process and what numbers don't assist that process. Um, there's just so much data that could be involved with this research project. So there is a lot of internal evidence there's, that could be used and that could be the determining factor in whether these implementations have actually assisted and improved outcomes of all of the questions that are being asked in the research. I know personally, if I were to see this type of implementation added to my hospital, um, I would be able to see a great change in the staffing that is located in my emergency department. I could see a great change in the wait times in the department, um, how many patients may be admitted due to physicians maybe realizing that not everybody needs a admission or um, you know, if insurance is based on that admission status and maybe they aren't always required to have the admission just stuff like that i would be able to see a change in the staffing upstairs and the times it takes for an individual to receive their bed upstairs especially if more beds were involved in care in the emergency department or upstairs in the hospital as that allows in my department a roughly 10 to 15 um, bed improvement and then upstairs it would just depend on how many nurses were available how many beds were available the floors and all of that that would be able to allow this improvement and implementation in the process in determining what ethical considerations that might be involved in this presentation um, it would just be dependent on exactly what question you're addressing or um, what specific issue you're addressing. Um, ethical considerations that are like involved in adding more staffing could be the overall staffing burnout and whether they feel as though um, they're able to adequately care for the patients involved and um, the needs that are involved um, of the hospital. So that would be like ethically considering the nursing staff involved, the physician staff, um, any of the healthcare staff that would be involved in taking care of the patients. Um, if we're looking at like a financial standpoint of insurance involved in maybe not admitting so many people or determining if they would meet some sort of admission criteria, um, there also becomes the ethical issue of a patient maybe not receiving the type of treatment that they could or should because they are not being admitted in which that would also fall along the lines of overall ethical considerations involved in not being able to care for patients in a timely manner because of admission rates, admission times, ER wait times. Um, there are some people who may be consider considerably suffering more due to the fact that they have to wait longer to receive medications, to receive care, to receive um, any sort of treatment in situations that are very critical, such as a stroke. Obviously, you have a radiologist that is immediately reading your level one CT scan to determine if the patient would require um, TPA or neurosurgery console or anything like that. So that doesn't always exist in circumstances of just a generic, um, you know, stomach pain or a generic um, broken bone or something like that. Those individuals are placed on a list and their information and their 
images and their lab results will all be read in a timely manner, but not so quickly that it allows for the process to run smoother. So those are some ethical considerations that could be involved in this type of research project. Overall, I hope that this research project is at least being considered in most hospital environments. I know that it's a very tough project to implement due to the many, many factors involved in patient care um, and finances and nursing staff. And there's a lot of factors that are involved in this type of research issue and clinical problem. So um, overall, I hope that many of the hospitals are looking at what ways to make this better and ways to improve this issue so that other hospitals are able to implement it into their staff and into their hospital environment as well to not only assist patients with better patient outcomes, but to also assist the staff in not feeling so much burnout, not feeling so overwhelmed with patient care or ED admit times or overall um, emergency department overcrowding.